Dear Nicholas and fellow moon miners, greetings from Romania and congratulations for inaugurating the first analogous moon mine on such a historic occasion. Forty years ago to the day, the eagle had landed on the moon carrying an astronaut with Swedish origins, Buzz Aldrin. It is only fitting thus that the first moon mine be opened on Swedish soil. As this location is still on Earth, the law applicable to its operation is the Swedish law. The law of the country determines the attributes of ownership of the soil, subsoil and mineral resources. But what if the mine were located on the moon itself? Who decides what you can lawfully do in outer space? Who, after all, owns the moon? You may have read uh, that the moon belongs to a gentleman named Dennis Hope, and that you can buy land from the Lunar Embassy, a company he founded almost 30 years ago. Should you go and uh, buy land from him in order to establish a moon mine? No way. He does not own the moon. Why? Well, first of all, because plenty of people have claimed the moon before and after him. Claiming that something is yours does not automatically make you uh, the master the owner of that object. If uh, this is true, it is as if I uh, claimed the moon mine in Sweden as my own property without even setting foot in here. The second reason is that most of the states have adhered to the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, who forbids national appropriation by claims of sovereignty, by means of use and occupation, or by any other means of outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies. Sweden, Romania, my own country, and most of the states in the world have signed and ratified the Outer Space Treaty. This international treaty is like the constitution of outer space. If one's company is headquartered in a country which is part of the Outer Space Treaty, then that company is subject to the rules of that treaty. The first article of that document proclaims that the extraterrestrial realms, outer space, including the moon and, uh, and other celestial bodies, shall be free for exploration and use by all states, and that there shall be free access to all areas of celestial bodies. The same treaty requires non-governmental entities to obtain authorization from the appropriate state party in order to carry out activities in the extraterrestrial realms and to consent to being continually supervised by same. Countries bear international responsibility for national activities carried out in outer space whether these are performed by governmental entities or by non-governmental entities like private enterprises. In other words, Sweden is equally entitled, like Romania, to explore and use the moon. However, Swedish companies need to be authorized by Sweden in order to operate thereby, and Romanian companies need to obtain authorization from the Romanian authorities in order to establish lunar mines. What other rights and restrictions exist on the moon for a company pertaining to a state party to the treaty? Well, among others, one needs to use the moon exclusively for peaceful purposes. Then, when you conduct operations on the moon, you should bear in mind the corresponding interests of all the other state parties to the treaty. Next, the lunar mine established by a Swedish company shall be opened for visits to Romanian astronauts as long as the lunar mines or lunar bases of Romania are open for visits from Swedish astronauts or moon miners. Who owns the lunar mine established by your company on the moon? Well, you can use it, but you cannot sell the location. What you can sell and what you own is what you extract from there. Now, there is another treaty called the Moon Agreement where Sweden is not a party. 
if Sweden were a party, then you would have to share with other countries what you extract from there. This provision would stop many entrepreneurs from going to the moon and exploiting its riches. On the contrary, there are voices calling for outright ownership of lunar mines. That is, if under the current provisions of the Outer Space Treaty, you cannot own the location but you can own what you extract from there, and under the provision of the Moon Agreement, should Sweden ratify it, you would have to share with others what you extract, then there are entrepreneurs who would like legal, uh, legal norms allowing them to own the location itself. How the law will evolve, it is, for now, a matter of speculation. How the analogous moon mine will evolve, and whether it will be transposed on the real moon, is a matter of your own skills. I therefore wish you all the best. Ad lunam and ad astram.